In this video, we're going to take a look at a new vulnerability that was found in Binwalk. It's a directory traversal vulnerability that can lead to remote code execution. And as you can see, this was only published a few days ago on January the 31st, so it's quite new. And I've got a feeling that this is going to show up in a lot of CTF style challenges, a bit like the exif tool vulnerability, which allowed command injection through some exif data or through the file name or something. And that starts showing up all over the place. So let's see if this shows up in a hack the box machine anytime soon. So I'll leave a link to this article in the description so you can read through the full thing yourself. And I'll just try to cover the most important parts and then we'll take a look at the proof of concept. So as I mentioned, this was published on the 31st of January, but it was actually presented at a Black Alps talk in 2022 in the summer. And the author says they were looking at a range of issues from logic bugs to extraction failures to path traversals. And they found a lot of different ways to conduct a path traversal attack in Python. They mentioned then that they'd found, they were looking at third party dependencies and they found a vulnerability in the PFS file system extractor, which is used by Binwalk. So they use this to gain remote code execution by abusing the plugin system. They raise this as a GitHub issue or they create a pull request to fix it. And as you can see here, the vulnerable versions 2.1.2b through to 2.3.2, which there's no currently fixed version. So this is the current version of Binwalk that's in your Linux system is vulnerable to this attack. It's been rated 7.8 high on the CVSS scale. And there is a summary here. It tells us that we can use the dash E extract mode. So that's all that's required is to use dash E with Binwalk and then provide a malicious file, which will gain remote code execution. And here's the bug. PFS is an obscure file system format found on some embedded devices. The only public documentation comes from a tool named PFS tool written by Peter Lecaniston. Stain, sorry about butchering the name. And this is the only thing you can find here. So there's this PFS.txt. It essentially has a little bit of an introduction to say they're naming it PFS because they named it PFS tool because PFS is a image and picture software and they describe what the file format is, what it should be, how the offsets work. And then also just a very short command on how to use the tool. So you can actually go back and download this and just use make to build it and then run it. I did actually try to make my own proof of concept and was having some issues. So we'll see how I got around that in the end. It was kind of lazy, but um, that's the way I do things. So the actual problem is that this PFS extractor plugin was merged into Binwalk in 2017 with this commit and a path traversal mitigation attempt was introduced on the same day in another commit and the commit introduced this change. So we have the code that was added. The problem here is that it uses ospath.join on line 16. So this essentially means that this line 17, this path will never be taken and they should have actually used os.path.absolutePath to ensure that the build path is fully resolved. So by crafting a valid PFS file system with file names containing dot dot slash, we can force binwalk to write outside of the extraction directory. So if you've looked at the zip slip attack, whereby you can create, say, a zip archive that has files in it, which you normally use like a sim link and basically put dot dot slashes in the file name. So that whenever the zip file, whenever the archive is extracted on the victim system, it will try to write that file. And if it has a dot dot slashes in it, it's going to go dot dot slash. It's going to go all the way back outside of where it should be able to write to, and it'll be able to overwrite arbitrary files. And that's a similar case here. So they provide a fix, which is just changing one line just from OS path dot join to OS path dot absolute path and that fixes the issue and in terms of exploitation they mentioned here there's a few things that you can do you could do the traditional thing of overwriting authorized keys in the ssh folder to gain ssh access or overwrite the bash rc file to execute commands on the next login which is kind of similar you'd be able to do that sort of stuff with like a zip slip attack as well but they also mentioned there's another way to exploit this which is the binwalk plugins so Binwalk allows users to define their own plugins using the Binwalk API. And the documentation says activating a plugin is as simple as dropping it into the Binwalk's plugin directory, which is at home.config binwalk plugins. 
and then the plugin will be loaded on all subsequent bin walk scans. So the cool thing here, as they mentioned, if you want to exploit the path traversal to write a valid plugin at that location, Binwalk will immediately pick it up and execute it while it's still scanning the malicious file, which means we can create a malicious PFS file and we can have that write to this location, the plugins file. We write a malicious plugin and while it's still extracting our malicious file, it will actually execute that plugin so we get code execution. They do give a proof of concept here, so this is a code that they use to do that. They also mentioned that it cleans up after itself. So this plugin executes two times since it does not define an explicit module attribute that defines its purpose. So if you define that, you'll be able to just execute it once, but they've specifically not done that so that they can use the first execution to gain code execution, in this case, just call in system ID. And then the second iteration will make it clean up after itself. So I thought that was pretty cool. They've left this as an exercise to the reader, which I did have a quick look at trying to do myself. But let's see how I got around that. We've also just got some future work and some other packages, I believe, which are vulnerable to the same attack or similar attacks. So yeah, I did try to put this together myself. Unfortunately, I couldn't even work out what PFS stands for. Something said it was professional file system. I've also seen Panda file system and Polar DB file system. And there's various tools and stuff for each different format. So if anybody can tell me, I don't, I haven't missed that. It's not in the article and I can't see it mentioned anywhere in relation to this PFS tool. So I'm interested to know what it actually stands for. Is it one of those three or is it something else? Um, so you can let me know. Anyway, how did I get the POC? I went to the GitHub here for Binwalk and I saw that this was raised. So we're looking for a fix for this path traversal vulnerability. And they left a POC here. So POC.zip and then they show how to run it. So let's take a copy of it. Let us do wget. We download the POC. I'm going to also unzip POC. And we have this malicious PFS. So let's have a look at the file type. It just says data. So I can try and print it out. And it actually is mostly looking okay. We've got a couple of question marks here. So unrecognized characters, but it's pretty much understandable. So we can see this is a location. It's going to try and write it to dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash. It's going back through those directories into the config, into bin walk, into plugins. And then it's going to write this malwalk.py. And it's basically just, this is just the Python code. So similar to what we saw on the advisory here in the proof of concept. So this code that we're looking at, it's going to import this, import OS, etc. Oh, let me minimize that. And all it's doing is printing out this message. It will print out a few times, as they mentioned in the GitHub issue, because they didn't define the modules attribute, which is what we saw. So it's going to trigger four times in this case. Um, the other thing to mention, in fact, I'll, I'll do this in a second. Let me go to Cyberchef. This is my lazy way of modifying that POC. So there wasn't, there isn't much different in there, but we do have some characters, which I guess are used to define the size and the number of files and stuff like that. But yeah, rather than calculating that, I basically went and opened this up here. Let's go home. Let's open up our PFS. Here we go. So we can see it prints it out. And then we can basically just go and replace here. Let's do... Actually, whenever I did this, I did this from hex because for some reason it was printing as a hex dump. But I've obviously done something different this time. I'm not too sure what. But this is a code that's going to run. So... We could literally replace this. And you might ask, why am I not just doing this in Notepad? Well, if I try to open this up, so this is the hex. So because some of the characters don't print, this is essentially what happens. So you could do this. This is how I did it originally, actually. Let me, let's close that down. Let's say from hex. And we convert it from hex. That's looking okay. And then we can do this replace. And if that's... Yeah, that's looking okay. All right. And then we can do this replace and say, crypto cat is lazy. Oh, this is regex. So I'm going to set that to simple string. There you go. So it's just literally replace that. 
line. And then we can basically just save this again. So let me save it to malicious.pfs back to the home directory. So we'll overwrite that. That's looking good. Let us go back now. And what I'll also do is zip this up. So you can put this in a zip. I also saw on one of the POCs it used, in fact, on the advisory, they use an image in this one. So you can watch this video and they actually have it in a JPEG. But in this case, I'll put it in a zip. Let's do zip exploit.zip and then just put the malicious PFS in there. Now, if I try to do binwalk e exploit.zip, nothing happens. And why is that? Well, if we take a look at the binwalk options, let me do binwalk. If we take a look at the options, there is an option in here somewhere, Matroiska, which says recursively scan extracted files. So that's what we need to do. If we were just doing binwalk e on the malicious.pfs, that would be fine. But because it's inside a zip, we're basically going to say dash m dash e and then exploit.zip. And look at the messages that are printed out. CryptoCat is lazy times four, which is true because look at how we just made that POC. But yeah, I think this vulnerability is pretty cool. I think we'll see it probably come up in some CTF style challenges, maybe as a privesc vector whereby you're able to run it as root, you're able to run binwalk as root, so then you can create a malicious PFS file, which gains code execution. You run binwalk as root, and then you are root. Another possibility would be like a web service where binwalk is being run on the end, so maybe you provide a zip file or something, and it's going to return the extracted contents. And obviously, if we provide it with a malicious PFS file, or a malicious PFS file system, should I say, it will extract and gain code execution on the server, and that might be a foothold as well. Anyway, this has been a quick introduction into the new remote code execution vulnerability in Binwalk. Shout out to the researchers who found it and presented the vulnerability. And let me know if you want me to do more videos like this. I haven't really done many of these kind of videos before. I did one on PwnKit and Log4j, where I basically talked through the vulnerability and then showed how to exploit it. But it's not really my usual style of video. So yeah, let me know if this was helpful. Hopefully it will be because I've got a feeling that you will see this if you play CTFs or hack the box or something. You'll probably see this come up. And yeah, any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.